leaders from across West Africa are set to meet for an emergency summit following the coup in Niger. Soldiers announced the military takeover on Wednesday, ousting President Mohamed Bazoum, who'd been in power for only two years. On Friday, the head of the Presidential Guards Unit, General Abdul Rahman Chichani, announced that he was Niger's new leader, saying that insecurity, economic woes, and corruption had led him to seize power. Now, countries, including key allies of the US and the EU bloc and France say that they will not recognize the coup's leaders, with some suspending security cooperation and budgetary aid. Well, there are concerns in the West about which countries the new leader will now align with, potentially moving closer to Russia, which took place after coups in neighboring Burkina Faso and Mali. Ahead of that meeting of the Economic Community of West African States and the West African Economic and Monetary Union, the coup's leaders have warned against any military intervention being taken against them. Earlier, I spoke to James Barnett, a senior fellow with the conservative think tank, the Hudson Institute, and he told me about the coup and whether or not it had come as a surprise. It, it is and it isn't, uh, insofar as I don't think that anyone, uh, other than maybe some people in Niamey who are following some of the kind of internal political maneuvers very closely, expected that there would be a coup this week. That said, I think that a lot of Western policymakers for a long time have kind of overestimated the uh, uh, kind of stability of Niger and underappreciated the fact that this is a country that has experienced many coups throughout its history and also one in which there is still a very fragmented security sector in which there are many rival units, both traditional units uh, that have kind of been involved in some of these uh, putches in the past as well as kind of new um, uh, special forces units, some that have actually been trained by the US and France that are kind of creating a new political environment, a, a new political landscape within the military that has been very difficult for the uh, president of uh, Bazoum to control. What is it about coups and this area of West Africa? Well, I think uh, some would argue that, you know, there's a, something of a, of a domino effect, if you will, that when uh, militaries see that a neighboring country, that officers have managed to pull off a successful coup in that region, in that country, uh, without uh, any serious international sanction or without, um, you know, themselves uh, kind of uh, losing power to a, a democratic, to a domestic opposition, then they, they assume that the conditions are set in their own country to do the same. And I think that what we've seen in Mali and Burkina Faso, both of which experienced two coups, uh, in the past few years, uh, two coups each, and then also in, in, in Guinea as well, um, that there's definitely a sense that the West Africa region, that there's not really any serious uh, kind of cost to staging a coup in terms of the kind of uh, regional diplomatic response or the international response. What we've seen though, unfortunately, in Mali and Burkina Faso, especially, is that the military regimes that have come to power have been very ill-equipped to handle the insecurity in their states, the prevailing insecurity, primarily in the form of jihadist insurgency. But I think, unfortunately, for the uh, Buddhists in Niger, their primary concern is, is not necessarily about the, the kind of status of the jihadist insurgency there. Their primary concern has more to do with their own kind of political and then financial power within Niger, within the security sector of Niger. Um, is this primarily a problem for Africa or the African leaders, the African organizations to solve? Because we, um, yes, we've seen the AU say, you know, you've got 15 days to, to put a civilian government back in place. But then you've also got the likes of the EU, uh, France, you've got uh, the US also saying that they, they don't recognize the new leaders. Um, Nigeria is Niger's uh, neighbor relatively stable. I mean, they have their own security issues, um, particularly with the uh, um, kidnappings for ransom and, and etc. What do they make of what's taking place uh, in their neighbor? Well, I think that the, the impression I'm getting, you know, speaking to friends and colleagues in Abuja and such is, is, is certainly that there's a, a concern about kind of the broader impact on regional stability that this coup might have in Niger. I think, you know, we can read for ourselves the statements from uh, President uh, Bola Tinubu of Nigeria. He's been very quick to condemn this coup. Um, you know, I think he's trying to make a statement. This is very early in his tenure with it uh, as being chair of, of ECOWAS. So this is a very early challenge for him. And I think he wants to come out and kind of make a forceful statement. Um, we'll 
we'll see tomorrow or, or rather sorry later today uh we'll see you know what comes out of this extraordinary summit that he's called in abuja within ECOWAS. but i think so far the you know certainly publicly the nigerians as well as the other ECOWAS member states have made it very clear that they don't you know uh that they they want to return to civilian rule in niger and i also think that you know nigerians very understandably are concerned about uh, kind of the, the stability of their northern neighbor and what impacts that might have, what second order effects that might have on their own security and their own stability. James, there are lots of words uh, of, you know, condemning these coups and lots of meetings um, by these um, organizations. Does it ever change anything? I mean, is there a carrot or a stick? Because it, it doesn't seem to change very much. Yeah, I think unfortunately, the recent history of the Sahel has been quite bleak in that regard. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of these similar condemnations uh, after the coups in Mali, Burkina Faso. Again, both of those countries experienced two coups apiece. We heard similar things after Guinea. I, I do think that ECOWAS, the, the language has been a bit more forceful and a bit quicker in this instance than it was uh, previously. Uh, there's often been a lot of prevarication and kind of delays in issuing some of these uh, statements and condemnations. But at the end of the day, I, I, I think it is uh, unfortunately a situation in which the, you know, the, the, the putschists, the, the people in the, the junta in Niger is not necessarily going to be deterred simply by rhetoric from the neighboring states and even sanctions, which are the other tool that uh, both ECOWAS and the US and the EU and others kind of have at their disposal you know, sanctions only have a limited effect on, on people who are, you know, willing to put their lives on the line to, to uh, take power from their own president. So I think, unfortunately, this is a situation where uh, we, we shouldn't expect too much to necessarily change too quickly. And that was James Barnett from the Hudson Institute speaking to me earlier.